previously on the Bee Fit Beekeeping channel. Instead of buying queens, I'm gonna graft them. <laughs> and because I'm doing this on a waxed frame, that is what makes it even harder. <laughs> See how tiny they are? Okay, I guess the only thing left to do is just close her up and check on her in a couple days to see if it worked. Oh, I really hope it did. <laughs> I have been moving pretty fast and taking a lot of risks in my apiary this year, but there are only two ways that you can learn. Either make mistakes, take risks and learn through trial and error, or you can learn through others. None of the other beekeeping channels really show that learning process of making mistakes and learning from them. They just say, don't do this, don't do that. So I can see how it can be kind of stressful for the viewer, not really knowing what they should do, kind of being scared to take risks. But if you never try, you will never know and you will never learn and grow as an individual. So, that is what I'm kind of doing with this channel. We are going to learn and grow together in beekeeping. We're going to figure out what works, what doesn't work. I'm going to show you all of the mistakes I made firsthand so that you can also learn from the mistakes as I learned from my own mistakes as well. So today we're going to figure out, can you overwinter a nuke that has started in August? Stick around and you'll find out. So since I last spoke with you, I was grafting queens that I was going to use to requeen um, a lot of my hives in my breeding program. But since then, I've done a lot of research and I've changed my mind. So let me catch you up to speed real fast. So over the last three days, I have been hard at work cutting wood and building five frame nukes, but not just regular five frame nukes, double story five frame nukes. Now, you're probably wondering, why did I do this? I stumbled upon a lecture by Mike Palmer and Adrian Queenie, and I was so inspired by both. Um, so let me catch you up to speed. If you haven't seen those before, I will just briefly summarize it so you have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So in both of their methods, they use a nuke as the backbone of a sustainable apiary. I'm quoting Mike Palmer on this because this is literally what he says. So the idea with this is, is these nukes become factories for brood and for building out comb. Bees perform better when they're in a small compact pay, uh, space. Their whole entire reason for existence is to spread their genetics. So that being said, they want to swarm and that is their all end all goal in order to say that they succeeded at life is to swarm and spread their genetics. So keeping that little bit in mind, that is why a nuke works great as long as you can control the swarming. So with a nuke, you are able to strengthen any of your, your stronger hives, any of your weaker hives, your production hives, you can strengthen any hive in your apiary by adding in brood. And then if you ever need comb to be built out, instead of putting it in your production hive to be built out, you put it in one of these five frame nukes and they'll build it out in just a couple days. Now you're probably wondering, okay, but why do you have to overwinter them? When you overwinter a nuke, that queen literally explodes in the next spring. So like I said, these little boxes literally become, a, uh, literally become factories for your apiary and they can work wonders. So I decided I'm gonna use them to my advantage. Um, yes, I wish I was learning about all this sooner. I would have liked to start doing this in July, but I'm gonna try it out in August and see what happens. So it actually turns out to be perfect that I had all of these queens that I had grafted because now I can use them in these boxes. And oh wait, you guys don't even know how many queens took yet. It wasn't as good as I was hoping for. <laughs> 
I have switched to using old white teas as smoker fuel and these babies burn forever. Make sure they're 100% cotton though. You don't want any other materials in them. Um, that can be pretty harmful to the bees. So what I ended up learning is 45 cells is way too many graphs for a small little nuke. And also, <laughs> one little mistake happened when I came back the next day to check on those, those queen cells that I grafted. I only had two that took, and I decided to go through the hive, and I noticed I was seeing lots of eggs. So, yep, you guessed it. <laughs> one of my queens got shaken into this nuke. Um, I must have missed her on a frame. She is very small. So she is really easy to miss, but I moved her somewhere else to another nuke that I have over there because then that hive that I took her from actually started making queens of their own. So I have a bunch of cells in there too to use to my advantage, but I did put in more graphs in here. So let's see how many we have. So it is fairly hard to see, but I have 11 cells that did end up taking on this frame that I'm going to be putting into my colonies. Now there are six cells that I can also take from in hive number seven. Yes, this was my favorite colony, so I'm kind of bummed I accidentally took the queen out. I could have put her back, but since I saw they're making cells, like I said, I'm going to use that to my advantage. and. Either I'll use one of the virgins in here, or I'll just reintroduce their mated queen that I have sitting over there in a separate box. So, like I said, the past three days I've been really busy, and I made all of these. There are 19 of them here. I am going to put the double stacks on them later, but today I'm going to fill up all of these nukes with bees so that they are ready for queens. A couple of them, or some of them, I'm gonna put the queens from that nuke in them today, but then the other ones, I'm leaving 10 empty because one of you guys that follows the channel, I know you said you didn't want a, a shout out, but Casey, you are the best, really, your timing is impeccable. I will be getting 10 more queens to put into these hives tomorrow. So, Things are moving really fast in the BeeFit apiary, as I said. <laughs> so my job today is to go through all of these hives, take some brood, take some, some honey frames, and put them in these hives. Now, let me show you how I will be making up each one of these. So since it is so late in the year, I will be adding more brood than one normally would. But what I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to be looking for one frame is going to stay empty just with just with foundation for them to build out i'm going to have three frames of brood and then i'm going to have one frame of honey i'm going to put the queens in here wait for them to mate see if the if she is laying in about a week or two and then after that i'm going to do another rearrange of some things which i'll sh i'll tell you when that time comes and I will be putting on the second uh, box that goes on top of this for them to build up for their winter stores. This is the way that Michael Palmer does it. He does it earlier in the year, but I'm stealing the way that he makes up his boxes from him. It pays to take notes because now I know which colonies I can take brood from and which ones that I should just let them keep doing their thing. So let's get started. Also, I am going to be taking frames from my colonies that tested lower for their mite levels that way my newer colonies i know i'm not gonna be putting a whole lot of mites into that colony to put more stress on them because i know it is late in the year so they will need to be kind of babied in a way somewhat <laughs> it looks like we're getting some new genetics in here i got a lot of really dark bees Versus the ones that have more orange. See the dark ones on there? So I've been sitting here for probably like 30 minutes thinking really hard. I've just been sitting here thinking this entire time that I really don't think it's a good idea to dig in and take out all of the brood and resources from a strong colony, especially this time of year, because then they have to rebuild. 
So you're then taking a strong colony and making them weak and now all you have are weak colonies in your entire apiary and honestly a strong colony is more valuable than a weak colony. A strong colony will produce more honey than three weak colonies so you always want to make sure your colonies stay strong, keep them strong and I'm going to change my mind on my game plan of what I'm going to do. So instead of taking brood for my stronger colonies and further weakening those um, and taking them from a strong state to then a weak state going into winter, I don't think that'd be a smart or wise decision. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my weak colonies and I'm just going to use those strictly for brood. I'm going to split them up completely, split them as many ways as I possibly can. And... Um, because they are weak that tells me that the queen is not the best so i'm going to take her and put her in a cage um, for later use if i do end up needing her i will bank her in another colony um, but i'm going to use my weak hives for all the brood that i need i'm going to split them if i can like three or four ways so that then i will no longer have a colony there correct but i will have them split up between all of these nukes so yeah, that's how I'm going to go about this. That's my game plan now. Alright, so the first candidate is hive number one. They had a mite count of one in the alcohol wash that I did um, a couple weeks ago. And they have been failing to build up quickly. They have pretty much been only 10 frames all year. And they haven't built up since, no matter any of my efforts that I've done. So... This is the first candidate to put into some nukes. There she is. It is sad that I am removing this hive, but I think this is the wisest decision because I have all of that filled, almost filled, and I put some in there too. So I'm gonna be getting pretty much three colonies out of just one hive versus weakening my strong colonies. These are some crazy looking spiders. They've been chilling underneath my bottom board. Uh, sorry, you can't live there no more. And I've got my queen in here for later use in case I end up needing her. She was very hard to catch. <laughs> Next hive I'm going through is hive number two. Last time I checked, I saw that they only had five frames built out. It looks like all the bees I just shook out are now wanting to go into this hive and <laughs> they're about to come out again. But this one also had a very low mite load, so perfect candidate. This colony is doing much better since when I checked on them last, so I'm going to skip this one and move on to a different one. It goes to show just how much checkerboarding actually works because last time I was in that colony, I checkerboarded some of the frames to help spread them out a little bit. And now they have the entire bottom box filled. So that's what I like to see. So the next hive we're gonna look at is hive number five, the hive that sent out multiple swarm cells on me. So that's my fault, not theirs, but still not the genetic I want, so. We're gonna tear them apart too. I'm trying to pick her up by her thorax and not her abdomen so I don't accidentally squish her. Of course, I could only pick her up by her abdomen anyways. <laughs> But I got her. If you've ever done this before, then you know it's not easy. <laughs> what happens when you shake the bees out? They'll find their way into one of the homes. I'm gonna leave these here because as you can see, some of them are landing here and going into the nukes. So I'm gonna leave them here for a little bit so that they gain more bees. But I was able to finish off two more out of that hive. So now I'm gonna go through hive number nine. This was my laying worker colony. So let's see if it's still pretty weak. If so, then let's split off of that. Well, that ended up being perfect. So this hive was in fact queenless. 
Um, the queen did not come back from her mating flight, so it was completely filled of bee bread, so that was perfect, because I could spread that amongst all of the nukes. Okay, so for my next hives, we're gonna go ahead and throw in these two that I split into these nukes so that um, they have a smaller home so that they perform a little better. This box is a little too big for them. So let's take all the splits I did. Um, I think it was like two weeks ago. There's one over there too. And throw them in these nukes. Ah, so the queen cell that I did throw in here made it. You can kind of see, but there are lots of eggs and milk brood in here. There she is, and she is beautiful. So instead of requeening this one, I'm just gonna let them keep doing what they've been doing. Now would you look at this? Going through this hive that I split, um, I'm seeing that some of my virgin queens hatched. And do you see this ball? What do you think this is? There is a queen in there, and they do not want her. See how they're tearing her legs off and they're all tackling her? They're trying to suffocate her. This is how the bees will act when they are rejecting a queen. See how they're pulling on all the legs? There's something about her that they don't like. Maybe she didn't develop properly, but she hatched and they do not approve. See how they're all forming a big, huge ball on her? And See the way they act when I move my finger across her? That bee has her leg. <laughs> they are rejecting this queen. The next hive we're going to go through is hive number 16. Last time I checked on them a week ago, I did see one swarm cell with an egg inside. I crushed it. So I'm going to see what they're doing now and if they're still trying to swarm. And if they are, then I will just do it for them. Aha! Now would you look at that? That is a swarm cell because of its placement on the frame. It's at the very bottom. This is where they will put a swarm cell, a queen cell that they want to send out a swarm with because it's closest to the entrance. So she can just walk out and they will follow. There was also two other cells on a frame over here. So perfect timing. This is gonna be the next candidate. I was having trouble finding that queen until I opened this snook back up and would you look at that ball. She's in there. I just saw her back. You can kind of see it underneath that bee. So I guess I'll just let them run their course. There's a reason they don't want her, so I'll just let them keep doing what they're doing. Next hive I'm going to go into is hive number 21. Last time I saw they had a swarm cluster, so I'm going to go in there and see what's going on. Hive number 21 had a couple swarm cells, so I was able to steal some frames from them to move into a nuke, so that worked out to my advantage. Now this is the queen that I was talking about was laying all of her eggs on the side of the cell. She in fact is still doing so, so yep, gonna requeen this entire hive.